Hello guys, it's Laura and you're watching Laura X Annie and today I'm here to talk about travelling with anxiety. So I have done this before, I'll be linked up here or there. It was on my channel, my best friend's pro channel years and years ago. So I got diagnosed in February 2017 with anxiety and depression. I have knew I had depression, I've known since I was seven that I've had depression, but anxiety was a new addition to it. So I, when I was younger, thought I was having SLVT attacks, which are kind of, not heart attacks, but the, it's the electrical current in your heart's just skip beat. Anyway, I thought I was having them, turns out they were anxiety and panic attacks. I now know that, so it makes life a lot easier. Dang it, I didn't need to cut out fizzy juice, but still, cut out fizzy juice if you can. <laughs> anyway, um, so I used to travel for college a lot. Um, I used to travel from Air to Paisley for college, and that was okay because a lot of the time in the morning my main focus was getting to uni on time but on the way back on the busy busy trains my train was never actually that busy in the morning but my train was always jumping on the way back but I always had Emma usually with me which was great because um, she got off at Co-Winning which is about six stops away from air and in actual fact they're very very short stops so really it's essentially like 15 minutes so it was good to have her for part of the journey. But when you travel from Ayr to Stirling, there's not as much people that can get on the train with you. So I stayed up for my full first year at university and then for one semester of second year, I decided nap, 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 nap. So at the start of this year, I moved back home and I thought, right, okay, I can travel to uni. Nope, because we had, not only was my anxiety still reeling from being in that flat, but we had the strikes and we had the snow. The strikes were meant to last two weeks, they lasted five. Yes, that's right, the strikes lasted five weeks. Not joking. And the snow lasted about four of them. And if you know, you will know that it may not be snowing in the air, but Holy shit, it's snowing in Stirling. So I couldn't actually get up to uni. So when the uni started again for third year, I was like, right, focus, you can do this. Plus I was getting really early trains. So I was very lucky that I was missing the rush hour with both my trains in the morning. So I was taking the 5.40 from air. Also, which doesn't help with my travel anxiety, traveling by myself on trains is when something's not working or something's late or something's broken. Like let's take Air Train Station for example, the week, the week before I left for uni to go on my first trip to uni by myself <laughs> on my first day of uni, the week before, Air Train Station was basically um, labelled as unsafe. <laughs> If you didn't know, Air Train Station is built into the Central Hotel in Air. Now this is a big hotel, like Frank Sinatra has stayed here. It's a big, it's been here for years, right? But it has been left to go into ruins as of like 2009, 2010. And then it was bought over, so it was shut down, then it was bought over. There's literally trees growing out of it and no one did anything with it. They bought it, didn't do anything with it. So now it's unsafe. They, you literally can only have four carriages at the train station because they're scared it's going to fall apart. There is a bridge. No trains can go from air to Stranraer. Hi there. I just want to revise my earlier statement and say that you now, as of a week and a half ago, after I filmed this video, you can now travel from air to Stranraer. I still think that bridge is going to collapse on us, but they did say it was only going to take two weeks to fix and it has been over a month and a half, maybe possibly even longer um to fix so there you go and the bit i talk about next about the the where you get your tickets yeah it's still not fixed so there you go great and actually where you buy your tickets and we're like the hub air is a huge hub you can't go in there either because they're scared it's gonna fall on us all <laughs> fabulous so that's great that's just fabulous right and they were like, trains are going to be cancelled, this, that, and next thing. And they decided to cancel it. Like, they decided that the train station was unsafe. 
just before the air show, which if you don't know is a huge cause living down the beach. They had the red arrows and everything like that, but it was like the day of the air show, the, after the air show finished, they basically were like, okay, trains are cancelled for a couple of days, and we were like, okay. They were trying to shut down the station altogether, but the Scottish Parliament <laughs> were like, no, that is a hub. Do you know how many people travel from that? So they had to put on like, at one point there was only two platforms in use, now all four platforms are in use, but even then there's only two ticket offices. The ticket office doesn't open till seven in the morning. So, but you can have a train from like five o'clock in the morning. Makes no sense to me. Anyway, so my uni, I am in a Tuesday and a Friday. So a Tuesday I'm in, my class is from one till three. Um, this will change next semester, so really this means nothing to you because, to be honest, the day you're watching this was my last day at uni, I have no exams. So, um, but on a Tuesday it's it's my seminar, which you need to go to, is 1 to 4 and then on a Friday I have a seminar from 12 to 1 and then 1 to 2. But I do have a lecture on a Tuesday morning from 9 to 11 and the same on a Friday. I technically have two, but I just have to pick do I go to PR or do I go to script writing. Anyway, that's from 9 to 11 as well. So I thought, I never used to go to my lectures. Why don't I get the 9am and that will mean that I will have to get up and I will have to travel? So that was meaning my alarm going off at 3.45 in the morning to then get a train at 5.40 to then get a change at... This is the thing with Sterling, you can't get a direct train from like Glasgow Central, you have to walk to Queen Street. And oh my god, I thought that took ages, my god, I can do it in seven minutes now. Which is an achievement in itself, but anyway, um, so you have to change. So I, for about four or five, no actually, seven weeks, six weeks, yeah, seven weeks actually, sorry. I was getting up at five, I was getting a train at 5.40 in the morning and then getting a train at 7.10 and that got me in for 7.36 I think and then I had to get a 20 minute train, 20 minute bus from the train station to my uni when I'd get in for just after 8 and then either like on a Tuesday I'd have to walk all the way over to Pathfoot but on a um, Friday I was staying in the same building because I was going to PR but so that's okay, that sounds fine. It does sound fine at that time in the morning. So it's really not the morning when I get up, it's at night. Because getting up that early in the morning, like basically getting up at four, your body is getting kind of thrown into being ready at like six in the morning to do work. So when it comes to four in the afternoon, I'm drained. So I have decided that I can no longer um, I can't stay any longer than four at university because when I get finish at four, I'm not home till like eight o'clock at night by the time I have to wait for my bus and then wait for the train and wait for the thing and change and usually I don't even get into air station. I have to get off at Newton on the air or get off at Presswick because of this train station and parking and stuff. So it is very, very hectic. A Friday is my favourite day. I just love a Friday because I'm 9 till 11 and then um, I have an hour break and then I'm 12 till 1, 1 till 2, then home. So I'm home for about 5. But it is very hectic and especially at that time of night at about 4, the trains are jumping because that is like rush hour. You are in rush hour, especially when you get to Central, it is hell. So recently, I have been getting, um, missing my lectures for the last couple of weeks. I have been missing my 9am's and that's no big deal because it's getting to the last bit of lecture. I actually have no lecture for f film on Tuesday so it's no biggie. But yeah it's, it's a bit of a struggle so I've been getting the 8.05 train from air which gets me in and then I get the 9.41 from Central to Stirling. The great thing about the 7.10 and the 9.41 is that the Stirling is their first stop. So. On to tips if you're travelling with anxiety and you're doing something like me. So, have an alternative route. Tip number one. So, I know I can get from Air to Glasgow by the train or I can get the X77 up to Buchanan bus station. So, I do have an alternative to get from Air to Glasgow should anything go awry. Glasgow to Stirling, on the other hand, 
I seem to not be able to find a train. Well, I, I know I can get the train. That's fine. I can't get a bus that will get me in on time. So, I have no alternative. If I were to get a train from here to Glasgow and the services were fine and then getting from, then I get up to Glasgow and suddenly they're like, oh no, we can't do anything with the trains and there's no bus replacements. I have no alternative to get to uni. I would literally just have to go and get in a train on the way back to air because there's no other way to get really there. So, tip two is aisle seats, especially if you're at the first stop and aisle seat is the best because I think even if there is no one sitting next to you, when someone says, oh, can I have a seat next to you? Stand up, let them sit down, but make sure you're the aisle seat because you'll be first off. Third tip, know where you're going, know your route. Maybe, I have done this a few times with Sterling, I have taken the route, like, for no reason. <laughs> I have done that before and it was a good idea. Take the route, know where you're going, look out the window when you're going and know what's near your stop. So I know what, just before they say, we are now approaching Sterling. I know now what is outside before that even goes over the tannoy so I know when to get up or when to pack up my stuff because that is the worst if you don't know where you're going and you're like right okay I don't know where I'm going how do I stop the <laughs> thingy yes that was me the other night when I had to go off a call winning on the Adross and Harbour train which goes nowhere near here you have to change but anyway um, that, that is one of the other things it's like you just need to know where you're going um, so aisle seats are always the best, um, but yes, I do understand, I do sometimes like, when I go from here to Glasgow, I do like to sit in at the side. Talk to friends on social media, we are living in a digital age, you can talk to here, there and everyone from all over the world on your phone, make sure your phone is charged, talk to friends, have good music playing and you'll be fine if you struggle to travel alone, always know that there's someone in the end of the line for you, someone you can text, someone you can call. If you're struggling with it just talk to them and it will feel like you're there and just make sure you have the right ticket make sure you have your rail cards out so you don't have to speak to the conductor that's always the best thing in the world I always hate it when you have to speak to the conductor especially when I was getting the 540 trains I would have to buy my ticket on the train so I'd have to talk to the conductor every morning and I really hated it because they would just kind of look at you and like sometimes your thing didn't work or your card didn't work or the their machine didn't work and you're just like I don't have time to buy a ticket at Glasgow because there's usually like a queue but yeah so always buy your ticket before you get on the train blah blah blah, blah. you guys know you guys know now um, but yeah so I think this is the best thing I've ever done which is travelling from universe, uh, travelling from home to uni I think I won't be doing it next year I think I'm going to be moving back up to Stirling with my mate but that's fine it's our last year, our last hurrah but I needed this year to travel and I think my anxiety with travelling is getting better and in regards to going on holiday I don't like planes I could never go on a plane again but I can do a train to London and I could do a train to London by myself because I've done it so many times and it's a direct train so I wouldn't be too bothered as long as there was someone to drop to come with me to Central Station to see me off in the train and there was someone to pick me up at Euston I could do it so that was it I hope this was insightful I hope you now know what is going on with Air and Stirling trains. If you travel from Air to Stirling or you travel to Stirling Uni or you travel to Uni at all, tell me how you cope with it. Is there any tips you want to give me? Is there any more tips you want to add to? Let me know. Um, and I will see you guys on Magical Monday. Hi there, me again. Just to let you know, it's not the Harry Potter playlist. It's my Geek Gear Wizardry unboxing that will be on Monday instead of the Harry Potter playlist. Just to let you know. That'll be coming on Monday, so I will see you guys then. Bye!